Today we're going to be taking a look at the Artec 3D scanners and how they can be uh, easily used in casting type applications for reverse engineering as well as inspection. So to get started, let's go ahead and start scanning this small cast part with the Artec Space Spider. So the Artec Space Spider is a great 3D scanner for capturing uh, smaller parts. Um, these size parts that are best for the Space Spider would be anything from the size of a golf ball all the way up to the size of a microwave. And the way that this system works is based off of structured light that allows us to uh, very quickly and easily capture 3D geometry. The alignments are done based off of the geometry of the part as well as the uh, texture mapping or the physical texture and color of a part that allows us to really efficiently just scan a particular area of a part and then go ahead and if we need to, flip that part over and then capture the other side to create a watertight 3D model. This isn't always necessary, but depending upon your application, you may want to capture the entire geometry of a particular part. Once we've captured all of the necessary geometry for our object, then being able to process this out into usable data is very simple and straightforward. We use a software called Artec Studio. Artec Studio allows us to quickly uh, remove any unnecessary data, align uh, scan models, for instance, if we needed to scan one side of the part and then flip it over, and then turn all of this geometry that we've captured into a polygonal mesh. So these polygonal meshes can be used for reverse engineering and inspection in a, a variety of different 3D softwares. So as you can see here, the overall scanning and processing side of this application is very simple and straightforward, and we're able to create a very high resolution, high quality meshes uh, simply by rotating a part around, scanning it with the Artec Space Spider, and then processing out that data. Uh, additionally, we'll take a look at the Artec Leo. Uh, so in many casting type applications, uh, we may be dealing with parts larger than the size of a microwave. And the Artec Leo is a great fit for you know, these larger scan volumes. For this example, we'll be using a relatively small part, but the Artec Leo can uh, very easily capture scan files up to the size of a small SUV. So to take a look at what it's like scanning with the Artec Leo, it's a little bit different than the Artec Space Spotter. Uh, as you can see, it's got a built-in touchscreen. It's also got a built-in processor on board that allows us to uh, scan and process data on the fly, uh, which gives us a very efficient user experience, being able to see exactly what data that we're uh, recreating and having all of that available for us as a reference. Uh, for our final models, we'll still be doing the final processing inside of Artec Studio. However, uh, for visualization and for 3D capture, it's very useful to be able to have an onboard computer that will show you exactly what you're capturing when you're capturing it. So once we've captured all of the necessary data off of our model, the processing portion will be uh, pretty much exactly the same as the Artec Space Spider. We'll simply just export the data that we've created off of the Leo over into Artec Studio, run the same type of processes uh, that we did on the uh, Artec Space Spider data, and then we're left with a really high quality polygonal mesh. So these polygonal meshes are made up of hundreds of thousands or millions of individual triangles and the way I like to look at these is they're kind of like a complex 3D picture. So uh, for applications where we want to recreate this as a CAD object, we can reverse engineer this model, extracting out all of the needed geometry in order to create our CAD model. So let's go back to the Space Spider scan that we did and talk a little bit about how we can convert this STL mesh into a CAD object. So for today's example, we'll be using 
uh, SolidWorks as our CAD platform, and we'll use a plugin called Mesh to Surface. So Mesh to Surface makes it very easy for us to be able to quickly extract geometry and set up a coordinate system for our part. So it's aligned with the world coordinate system inside of uh, SolidWorks. And then from there, we can start the reverse engineering process. So for this part, it's relatively mechanical in nature. So the way that we'll extract the majority of the geometry is very similar to the way that you would actually design a part inside of CAD by starting with a 2D sketch. We can extract that 2D sketch data directly off of our scan data and uh, simply fit that into place. Some of the benefits that we have when uh, using a reverse engineering software like Mesh to Surface is it allows us to look at multiple sections at one time to make sure that we are being as absolutely accurate as possible. To finish out this part, we'll continue to do the same process in various cross sections. So whether it's 2D extrusions or revolves, we can simply just repeat this as needed throughout our part until we have uh, completely extracted all of the geometry that is necessary. And while it won't be shown in this particular video, uh, if you have more organic surface topology, uh, so good examples of this would be body panels on cars or a more free flowing surface. Uh, for those applications, we can still use uh, the mesh to surface plugin inside of SOLIDWORKS or a variety of other reverse engineering softwares, uh, but we use a slightly different workflow that you can refer to one of our other videos on reverse engineering organic surfaces to see exactly how that works. So from here, we'll continue modeling out this part, extracting all of the necessary geometry, and then in just a couple of moments, We'll see our completed model and we'll talk a little bit about doing a 3D comparison, uh, checking our work compared to the original scan file and how we can use tools like that to uh, further inspect parts. So as you can see now, we're just going ahead and putting the finishing touches on this CAD model. So instead of dealing with a uh, triangulated mesh, now we have a nice clean parametric model that we can edit in the future or build into a further assembly of components. And to show a little bit about how we can inspect this uh, directly inside of mesh to surface, you can see that we can directly overlay our scan data and then using our compare tool, we can uh, build a heat map to see exactly where we may be deviating from the original model. Uh, there are more detailed inspection softwares that we can look at as well. And if you'd like to learn more about that, uh, feel free to refer to other videos that we have specifically on the topic.